welcome to lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering and we are in module 3 and lecture 8 on compressibility and consolidation of soils module 3 lecture 8 on compressibility and consolidation so in this lecture we are going to discuss about uh, you know the compression curves particularly under different conditions like when it is subject sample is subjected to compression and uh, unloading that is uh, recompression and uh, we also discuss about what will happen when the load increment ratios are kept longer or when uh, you have low low loading load increment ratios and what will happen if a particular load is kept for long uh, duration that is the effect of the secondary consolidation and thereafter we will introduce ourselves to uh, you know the need for the radial consolidation and then uh, and then in the next lecture we will be discussing about the methods for accelerating uh, consolidation settlements. So let us uh, before uh, going into the details of whatever we have just uh, uh, discussed now let us see Now let us look into the effect of sample disturbance on E log sigma dash curves especially for normally consolidated and war consolidated clays. So first consider normally consolidated clay and in this particular figure where void ratio versus sigma dash on the logarithmic scale is shown here and here if a normally consolidated soil that is uh, the soil which is actually having higher water content and uh, you know where uh, uh, you know this uh, pre consolidation pressure the effect, present effective pressure is only sigma naught dash and if that is the maximum pressure whatever the soil has seen then in that case in the field what we actually see is the straight line is the virgin compression curve. So this is also called as field uh, normally consolidated line or field compression curve but when we take a sample and if it is subjected to you know generally the sampling is done by using appropriate uh, by using an appropriate uh, sampler and uh, which actually gives the least disturbance but uh, if you have a laboratory specimen which is uh, uh, tested uh, which is actually obtained uh, with careful recovery then what we get this E log sigma dash curve is like this uh, this is indicated as a curve 2 in the figure. But if the same specimen is actually remolded and uh, reconsolidated then actually what we will have is the remolded specimen will have uh, you know this type of uh, uh, E log sigma dash curve. So if you look into this all 1, 2, 3 the field compression line and laboratory undisturbed sample which is uh, you know uh, which is indicated as curve 2 that is the uh, from the consolidation obtained from the consolidation test on a carefully recovered uh, specimen and, uh, and uh, curve 3 which is obtained from again from consolidation test on a remolded specimen. So if you look into this at a certain uh, stress when it actually has been subjected then all they will actually meet at a point which is the point for E0 where E0 is the the initial void ratio at sigma naught dash that is the current overburden pressure. So if you look into this, this uh, the difference the distinct, distinct difference between uh, field compression curve and uh, these laboratory uh, uh, undisturbed sample is because of the you know the degree of disturbance what actually uh, enters into the uh, testing and uh, the curve 3 which is uh, you know if the same uh, soil which is actually tested in uh, 2 is say remolded and uh, re, uh, reconsolidated then what we get is this uh, so called E log sigma dash curve which is uh, you know in this form and uh, where actually it appears and, and one more thing is that uh, if you look into this for remolded specimen very difficult to distinguish uh, uh, you know where is the you know the pre consolidation pressure. So if you look into the as you go away from the you know the with the degree of uh, disturbance uh, the very difficult to distinguish uh, its correct uh, the, the, the stress history what the sample actually has been subjected. So in case of a normally consolidated clay uh, what we have is that the field compression curve and uh, you know the, the E log sigma dash curve uh, for the uh, laboratory test specimen uh, tested with uh, carefully on, on a carefully recovered uh, specimen and uh, you know the curve 3 which is the obtained from the remolded specimen 
they actually meet at a point which is actually uh, approximated as 0.4 E naught or 0.4 to E naught according to Terzeghi and Peck 1967. Now let us see what will happen for a war consolidated clay. So as you all know that uh, you know the, uh, the, the soil actually has seen a pressure which is actually uh, much more than the current present war burden pressure. So you can see that so because of this the initial portion of this uh, curve is actually flatter and then once this uh, stress which is actually is transferred to the soil is actually more than what it has actually seen then it will change into the uh, you know uh, so called normally consolidated mode again. So you can see that uh, you know the two limbs which are actually there this is actually the portion AB and portion BC. So this for this uh, dotted line is the field compression um, the, the, this dotted line BC is the virgin compression curve for the, the so called uh, you know of the in the uh, can be obtained for the OC clay in the field and AB portion and BC portion these two are the you know two segments uh, which will be there and uh, the slope of this line AB is uh, recompression index and slope of this line uh, BC is the uh, you know the compression index CC. Now if, uh, if you are actually testing an undisturbed sample the you can see that uh, the degree of uh, in the, the initial portion is flatter and uh, then you know again it changes into the uh, normally consolidated mode and again it point meets at a point C and when the rebound actually happens for a uh, that means that once the unloading actually happens here in the laboratory CF segment uh, is actually is the laboratory uh, you know unloading uh, portion. So you can see here that the according to Schmettmann 1953 he concluded that the slope of this line and the slope of this line AB are almost identical. So Schmettmann 1953 he concluded that the field compression branch AB has approximately has the same slope as the laboratory unloading branch CF. So in the in case of the ore consolidated clay and what we have is that uh, you know the two segments AB and uh, BC. So that is the reason why while discussing uh, you know the settlements and uh, you know we have to see uh, the uh, get the uh, pre consolidation pressure after getting the pre consolidation pressure then we have to if, if you are actually having a uh, you know if this is the field compression curve which you are adopting for the design suppose if this is the stress which is actually has been subjected then you have to calculate for the settlement for this portion and you have to calculate for the settlement for this portion. So that is what actually we have discussed in the previous lecture. So in this uh, the curve 1 is the E log sigma dash variation for undisturbed or consolidated clay in the field. So this is actually idealized for the field conditions but if we are actually having uh, the sample recovered from the same site uh, uh, same portion where actually the with the with the little uh, degree of disturbance then we can see that this is how what we get is that laboratory undisturbed sample will yield E log sigma curve like this and then you know CF is the unloading branch and the slope of this uh, AB and CF are found to be identical and one more thing is that CR is approximately one fifth to the one tenth of uh, you know CC. So uh, in the case of absence of data and it can be assumed that uh, the CR the recompression index is one fifth uh, to one by ten of CC the CC is nothing but the compression index the slope of the normally consolidated portion. Now let us see uh, what will happen uh, you know if we are actually having deviations from the consolidation test and uh, in the if uh, the standard consolidation tests are conducted uh, with a soil specimen having a thickness of say 25 mm or uh, 25.4 mm in which the load on the specimen is doubled every 24 hours. This is the standard the standard consolidation tests or idometer tests are conducted with a soil specimen having a thickness of 25.4 mm in which the load on the specimen is doubled every 24 hours in the laboratory. So this means that um, the delta sigma by sigma dash is equal to 1 the delta sigma by sigma delta sigma is nothing but the change in load towards the, the initial load. So delta sigma by sigma dash is equal to 1 load increment ratio is always maintained as 1. So the question is that what will happen if load increment ratio is greater than 1 what will happen if load increment ratio is less than 1. So what will be the effect of any deviation from the standard procedure like if you do not keep for 24 hours if you keep for long hours what will happen if you keep for less than 24 hours what will happen. So the striking changes in the shape of the compression time curves for one dimensional consolidation tests are noticed if the magnitude of 
delta sigma by sigma dash is less than 0.25. So it has been point, it has been noticed that uh, the several investigators actually have carried out and uh, the striking uh, changes in the shape of the compression time curves were obtained uh, you for the one dimensional consolidation test if the magnitude of delta sigma by sigma dash is less than 0.25. So, according to Lenotz and Alta, Sheff, uh, Alta Sheffel 1964, uh, they conducted several tests on Mexico City clay with the different load increment ratios and with variation of excess pore water pressure measurement with the time. Uh, so, conducted the several consolidation tests on Mexico City clay with the different load increment ratios and variation of uh, excess pore water pressure measurement. So, in this particular slide, time which is actually shown on the x axis. So the specimen height is actually shown here. You can see that this is delta sigma by uh, by sigma dash greater than or equal to one, and uh, and here delta sigma by sigma dash less than 0.25. That means that as the delta sigma by sigma, so this is equal to or the greater than one, or found to be you know somewhat uh, you know in this line. And when delta sigma by sigma dash is less than one, it actually migrates in this direction. So. Uh, for delta sigma by sigma dash less than 0.25, the position of the end of the primary consolidation is somewhat uh, difficult to resolve. And also the C alpha by C C, the C alpha is nothing but the secondary compression index to the uh, you know primary com consolidation, uh, uh, the uh, compression index in the primary consolidation range increases with the decrease of the load increment ratio. So, uh, what we can see is that uh, for delta sigma by sigma dash less than 0.25, the position of the end of the primary consolidation is somewhat difficult to you know resolve we will not be able to whether you cannot say whether it is here or here or and also it has been noted down that uh, you can see that the distinct difference of uh, uh, excess pore water pressure dissipations which actually happens excess pore water pressure here is that you know delta sigma by sigma dash is actually happening with less than 0.25 it is actually much before and then uh, whereas in case of delta sigma by sigma dash greater than or equal to 1 it is actually happening at much later that can be understood but uh, here uh, you know the the reduction in the, the early uh, you know this patient can be understood uh, because of the low load but uh, here uh, what is actually happening is that here um, uh, the very difficult to distinguish uh, uh, the so called uh, you know the end of the primary consolidation process and uh, another thing is that the ratio of C alpha by C C increases with, uh, with the decrease of the load increment ratio. So, as we go in this direction as we go in this direction uh, you know what will happen is that the ratio of C alpha by C C. Uh, uh, increases C alpha by C C that is ratio of secondary compression index to compression index compression index increases. Now, when uh, delta sigma by sigma dash is say less than 1. So, here void ratio and uh, log sigma dash are plotted here and uh, this is a case the standard uh, E log P curve for uh, delta sigma by sigma dash is equal to 1. If it is less than 1 it actually uh, it will be right above the uh, you know the conventional iodometer test result. If it is greater than one, it is actually somewhere here. So if you look into this here, uh, for a given load and more, uh, you know, when when you have got delta sigma by sigma dash greater than one, so the void ratio, uh, you know, decrease is high. But when you have got delta sigma by sigma dash is less than one, the percentage decrease in void ratio is low. Uh, when you relatively when you compared with these two. So, when delta sigma by sigma dash less than 1, the ability of individual soil particles to readjust to their position is small. So, when delta sigma by sigma dash is less than 1, the ability of uh, uh, soil particles to readjust to their positions is very small and which results in a smaller compression compared to delta sigma by uh, sigma dash greater than or equal to 1. So, what we are actually trying to conclude from this slide is that when delta sigma by sigma dash less than 1, the ability of individual soil particles to readjust to their positions is small, which results in a smaller compar compression uh, compared to delta sigma by sigma dash greater than or equal to 1. So, that is the reason why we actually have a, a distinct difference when you actually have a variation of uh, the delta sigma by sigma dash. Now, what will happen? Let us see that uh, the load duration. Suppose if you conventionally we keep 24 each load increment ratio 
uh, which is actually with delta sigma by sigma dash is equal to 1 is maintained for 24 hours. So, in a conventional consolidation te uh, test in which a small specimen left under a given load for about a day, uh, a certain amount of secondary consolidation takes place before the next load increment is added. So, that is uh, uh, possible, but uh, so in this particular slide what we have actually seen is that void ratio and the sigma dash that is the log scale that is the uh, you know the uh, the log sigma dash curve this log sigma, log sigma dash axis. Now, what we are actually having is that and the curve A uh, is the uh, is the end of the primary consolidation load duration just sufficient for the primary consolidation. So, load duration is just sufficient for the primary consolidation when you plot and this what is actually referred here in as curve A and curve B is the load duration uh, with 24 hour load increment duration. That means that this test action is strictly conduct conducted with uh, 24 hour uh, load duration. When you have more than 24 hours load duration you can see that the curve actually shifts towards uh, when increasing load duration E log sigma dash curve actually shifts towards left side. So, uh, what we have is that uh, you know the sigma c dash the pre consolidation pressure is also changing previously here it should be this much. So, there is a, a shift in the pre consolidation pressure uh, uh, magnitude and uh, when we actually have uh, you know just actually sufficient for the end of pre consolidation you actually have different pre So, it can be noted that different uh, values of magnitudes of uh, pre consolidation pressure. So, for soils that display secondary compression volume changes occur after the end of primary consolidation because not all soils actually express secondary consolidation. For soils that display secondary compression volume changes occur after the end of primary consolidation if each load increment is in place for a longer period. So, most common for the uh, are the normally consolidated and norm likely or normally no likely or consolidated soils up to OCR is equal to 2 and they are referred as the likely or consolidated soils. So, if each load increment is in place for a longer period uh, what will happen is that uh, normally consolidated or likely or consolidated soils they actually subjected to uh, a certain degree of uh, you know secondary compression. And heavily ore consolidated soils are less prone for the secondary compression. So, because heavily ore consolidated soils are less prone for the uh, secondary compression and the shape of the curves becomes less distinct with a longer period of duration, longer period in duration and it is more difficult to difficult uh, sigma naught. So, uh, with the shapes of the curves uh, they keep on changing and uh, with the longer duration uh, it is difficult to predict, it is difficult to uh, you know. Uh, difficult to determine sigma naught uh, c that is the pre consolidation pressure uh, determination is difficult here. So, one if you see this hatched portion here and this volume change actually occurs due to the secondary compression this volume change because uh, that same load increment that load duration kept for a longer duration. So, what will happen is that the secondary compression component is actually entering into the phenomena into the into the picture and the, the it actually results in the volume change and uh, it causes the uh, this is attributed to the secondary compression. So, what we understood is that if you are actually keeping the load uh, duration uh, slightly for uh, longer uh, uh, longer hours then what we actually have seeing is that uh, there is uh, you know uh, certain amount of uh, uh, for war consolidated soils uh, you know which is uh, has the negligible influence because they are actually not having much of uh, uh, say, uh, you know the secondary consolidation component will be very very low, but when you have the normally consolidated soils and war consolidated soils likely war consolidated soils we have uh, you know we can see the volume changes due to secondary compression significantly. And also one more thing we have discussed is that the shape of the curves become uh, less distinct uh, with a longer period and duration and it is more difficult to determine uh, pre consolidation pressure sigma dash c. Now, what will happen let us say that sample thickness normally the sample thickness to diameter ratio we actually have said that diameter to uh, thickness ratio is actually maintained as uh, 3 basically to reduce the, uh, the side wall uh, frictions that is one of the uh, reasons for that. And the second reason is that uh, uh, you know to have the uh, uh, you know the epsilon r is equal to 0 
and uh, and also to represent the one dimensional consolidation only so for similar load increment ratios proportion of the secondary to primary com uh, compression increases with a decrease in the sample thickness so for if you are having a, for a similar load increment ratios the the proportion of secondary to primary compression increases with a decrease in sample thickness and also the ratio of secondary to primary compression increases with a decrease in the load settlement ratio now let us see the secondary consolidation or creep effect so in this particular slide where what we see is the e log sigma dash curve again but we have indicated here three curves one is curve a and curve b and there is one curve which is actually for example after 10000 years of consolidation so in the curve a what we see is that the sedimentation is actually happening and uh, you know this is the current war burden pressure and then you know further it is undergoing normally consolidation and the curve b is uh, you know after 10000 years if the sample is actually subjected to 10000 years of consolidation when it is actually subjected then uh, the con when it is consolidated and then what we get is this variation so the continued uh, secondary consolidation of a natural clay deposit has some influence on the pre consolidation pressure so the continued secondary consolidation of a natural clay has some influence on the pre consolidation pressure sigma dash c a clay that has recently been deposited and come to equilibrium by its own weight can be called as young and normally consolidated clay a clay that has recently been deposited and comes to equilibrium by its own weight can be called as young and normally consolidated clay and curve a is for young normally consolidated clay and uh, wherein uh, sigma c dash is equal to sigma naught dash and uh, at e naught sigma that is the at this particular point that is the initial wall ratio and this is the curve here if the same clay is allowed to remain undisturbed for about uh, 10000 years and for example under the same uh, effective under the same effective uh, war burden pressure sigma naught dash there will be creep uh, of secondary consolidation this will reduce the void ratio from e not to e1 because of the creep effect the void ratio reduces from e not to e1 the here you can see that the constant uh, effective stress the sigma naught dash which is actually no change actually happened assume that for the 10000 years then you know the void ratio changes to e1 now uh, so the clay may now be called as so the, this clay is actually called as aged normally consolidated clay so previously if there is a fresh deposition of clay is happening and the reasonably deposited and comes in equilibrium by its own weight then it is called normally young normally consolidated clay and if this you know subjected to certain amount of secondary creep and then will reduce the void ratio from e not to even as shown in this slide and this clay may be now called as the aged normally consolidated clay now if the clay at e1 that is at this particular point clay at e1 uh, now the initial void ratio for this is that e1 which is actually after 10000 years uh, and the effective over burden pressure is sigma naught dash that is this pressure sigma naught dash and uh, the curve looks like b and the pre consolidation pressure when determined by the standard uh, procedure will be sigma 1 dash so when you do the consolidation test on the sample which is actually collected after 10000 years with the sigma 1 dash is the sigma naught dash as the uh, you know initial war burden pressure what you look like is now, now that uh, pre consolidation pressure is actually nothing but sigma 1 dash so the pre consolidation pressure when determined by standard procedure it will be sigma 1 dash now sigma c dash is equal to sigma 1 dash, sigma 1 dash and which is greater than sigma naught dash so this is sometimes referred to as the uh, quasi quasi pre consolidation effect more pronounced in the plastic clays so this type of uh, behavior is actually more pronounced in the clays of high compressibility and high plasticity that is ch type of clays that is the uh, more pronounced in the plastic clays jerom jerom in 1972 uh, gave an estimate of the relation between the plasticity index and the ratio of the quasi pre consolidation pressure to effective war burden pressure that is sigma dash c by sigma naught dash for the late glacial and post glacial clays so for glacial and post glacial clays uh, so you can see that as the plasticity index value is decreasing 
there is an increase in uh, you know uh, ratio of uh, quasi pre -consol consolidation pressure to the effective orbital pressure sigma naught dash. So, with increase in uh, plasticity index and you know this is actually more prominent and it actually increases sigma c dash by sigma naught dash uh, which is uh, which will be high. So, the quasi pre consolidation effect will be very very more pronounced or significant in plastic clays. So, you can see from the table which is given here that increase in the plasticity index value uh, where the sigma 6 uh, sigma c dash by sigma naught dash sigma c dash is nothing but uh, quasi pre consolidation pressure and sigma naught dash is nothing but effective overburden pressure. So, sigma c dash and sigma naught dash which is actually they are for late uh, glacial and post glacial clays. Now, after having discussed the effect of load duration and effect of uh, uh, you know the load increment ratios and the effect of secondary consolidation and effect of sample thickness. Now, let us look into uh, the compression curves and different forms of representation and particularly for compression and the swelling that is in the unloaded uh, zone. So, if you so if a series of load increments is applied to a specimen which is initially wet and resulting equilibrium states will appear and as shown below. So, if you look into this here this specimen this is the E sigma dash that is the compression curve E sigma dash curve where you can see that the sample actually has been subjected to uh, you know this curve and up to load E naught to E 2 then unload it and then reload it and then you can see that the you know it joins here and uh, then it uh, goes it, it load it get loaded further and then after here unloaded again and reloaded here. So, you can see that the cyclic war consolidated sample recompressing and cyclic uh, uh, this is simply war consolidated or the swelling which is also called this this limb is actually called as the, the swelling portion that is the unloading unloading portion that is the soil actually bounces back when the load is actually removed. So, this is actually plotted on the E log sigma dash curve when it is actually plotted you can see that this all this whatever whatever may be the loading unloading and loading unloading cycles we have and this line joining this line this line is actually indicates the compression line which is actually obtained and close to the the field compression line uh, for normally consolidated soils. So, uh, E naught E 1 E 2 E 3 and then unloading and reloading and unloading and reloading. So, whatever the cycles we have it actually follows the that uh, slope. So, uh, this uh, is further indicated the outermost curve connecting the points when the specimen is in loose possible states is referred as the virgin compression line that is the this line is actually referred as the virgin compression line E naught E 1 E 2 is referred as virgin compression line. Uh, and uh, because it is strictly the line connecting the equilibrium states whereas, uh, equilibrium states in the sense that uh, for that uh, type of increment load the consolidation is completed and anything uh, and it is strictly the line connecting the equilibrium states whereas, the consolidation is a term used only for the time dependent process between any pair of. So, it is also uh, you know this uh, this is actually called as virgin compression lines uh, because uh, it is uh, strictly the connecting the equilibrium states whereas, virgin consolidation is something like the consolidation is you know, we have a time dependent process between any pair of equilibrium states. So, the equation for the virgin compression line is given by E is equal to E naught minus C z by log to the base 10 by sigma dash by sigma naught dash. So, the outermost curve connecting the points when the specimen is in the loose possible states is referred to as the virgin compression line rather than as virgin consolidation line. The reason is due to the fact that the line connecting the equilibrium states whereas, the consolidation is the is the term used only for the time dependent process between any pair of equilibrium states. Now, this equation of uh, virgin compression line uh, further uh, represented uh, as V in the in the in terms of uh, sample volume in, in terms of uh, specific volume uh, that nothing but uh, nu and is equal to nu naught minus lambda natural logarithm of p by p naught which is nothing but sigma by sigma naught and uh, wherein the lambda is a characteristic constant and uh, and uh, the nu naught is the initial uh, specific volume. 
So, specific volume is nothing but 1 plus E uh, and then E is the, the these are actually related as the water content specific gravity and uh, void ratio they are related with one, one another. And equation of virgin compression line uh, will be denoted as uh, nu is equal to nu naught minus uh, uh, lambda uh, natural logarithm of p by p naught and equation for swelling and recompression loop will be represented by a single straight line of the form uh, that is the nothing but nu is equal to nu naught minus kappa. Uh, this kappa is the for the uh, you know the recompression loop or the swelling loop. Uh, so, which is something analogous to uh, swelling index or recompression index uh, natural logarithm of p by p naught where lambda and kappa are the characteristic constants for the soil and virgin compression lambda line represents the irreversible process whereas the swelling and recompression uh, kappa lines represent the reversal process. So, lambda line represents the so this is uh, uh, this is uh, when you plot uh, this line is nothing but the lambda line. So, the lambda line represents the irreversible process because the soil subjected to irrecoverable changes and it is actually called as irreversible process whereas the swelling and recompression uh, kappa lines represent the reversible process. Now, this is further uh, indicated uh, whereas equation for normal compression line uh, OACD is given by uh, E is equal to E naught minus CC into log sigma dash z. So, here you can see that E versus sigma dash z for the consolidation uh, compression is actually shown and this is for the one dimensional compression and the swelling. So, O A and it is actually subject at O it is subjected to an effective war burden pressure of sigma naught O sigma naught uh, sigma naught sigma naught and at point uh, C it actually has been subjected to uh, sigma dash y that is the uh, uh, it is rendered it is called as the yield stress and uh, D uh, is again uh, the load was actually terminated here. So, you can see that at point C uh, you know the load uh, you know is uh, uh, stopped and then gone unloaded that is called uh, recomp uh, unloading and then that is called also is called as a swelling line and this is called recompression line. So, B A uh, is the recompression path and then it, join, it follows or joins to C and then follows further to D. So, this is again in the normal consolidated mode. So, the same thing is represented in the void ratio uh, versus log sigma dash z. Then what will happen is that this is uh, the uh, slope of the C C that this is called as the normal compression line normal compression line and at point, uh, point, point from uh, the point A and C they are at this point and uh, A and C are at this point in the, in the case of normally in case of log sigma dash z you will see at this particular point and uh, B is at this point where that uh, uh, at the end of uh, swelling or a re unloading uh, effect and then you know uh, so you can see that sigma naught dash is the war button pressure here sigma dash y is the yield stress uh, here and uh, so you can see here that E kappa is this particular uh, one at this particular point where uh, you know this recompression or uh, the swelling was complete. So, this uh, this equation for the swelling and recompression lines are given as E is equal to E kappa minus C s into log sigma dash z and E is equal to E naught into E, e is equal to E naught minus C c log sigma dash z is the normal compression line for O A C D the equation for line O A C D is given by E is equal to E naught minus C c log sigma dash z and uh, for swelling and recompression line it is actually given as uh, you know A B C A B C A B C which is nothing but E kappa minus C s log sigma dash z. Now, since uh, delta V that uh, change in volume is equal to change in void ratio and uh, log x to the base 10 is equal to 0.43 times natural logarithm of x then we get C c is equal to 2.3 lambda and C s is equal to 2.3 kappa. So, by using uh, this we can actually uh, you know once, one, once, once you substitute this natural logarithm uh, into, uh, into, uh, into this uh, 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 logarithmic of base 10 by using this we actually uh, get into this particular relation they are one and the same. So, for war consolidated soil at a point such as B the yield stress ratio 
y naught is given by y naught is equal to sigma naught dash by by sigma naught uh, this. So uh, for uh, for a war consolidation soil, for a war consolidation soil, for a war consolidation soil that is uh, at a point such as B, the yield stress ratio y naught is given by y naught is equal to sigma naught dash y by sigma naught dash, where the where uh, where sigma naught dash is the current stress and it is. Uh, and uh, sigma naught uh, uh, dash y is the yield point which uh, lies at the intersection of the swelling through point b and for the for with the normal compression line so uh, with the normal compression line that is this is so we are actually defining here the yield stress the yield stress is nothing but sigma dash y ratio of sigma dash y to sigma naught dash sigma naught dash y is actually obtained at this particular point and uh, where it actually has from the normal compression line where it meets this particular first limb where the unloading unloading the which actually meets the normal compression line and that is actually is rendered as a sigma dash v and which is uh, sigma dash by v by sigma naught dash where sigma dash uh, sigma dash is the current uh, current sigma dash o sigma naught dash o is the current stress and uh, sigma dash y is the yield point at which uh, it lies at the intersection of the swelling line through B with a normal compression line. Now let us see the effect of one, one dimensional consolidation and swelling of soil in the ground due to deposition and erosion. So we know that uh, deposition and erosion they are the continuous uh, process but uh, on the soil layer which is actually prone for uh, uh, you know particularly the normally consolidated and now likely over consolidated soils they are actually prone for changes because of these actions like deposition and erosion. So considering this particular slide an element soil element which is actually subjected to uh, vertical stress sigma dash z and horizontal stress sigma dash h and uh, when the erosion actually when the deposition happens what will happen there is a increase in the soil water burden above this particular point that it is subjected to high stress due to the so you can see the z dash b is uh, increase here. But when there is uh, uh, erosion takes place the stress on this actually decreases for example you can see this is the you know when the erosion takes place from here to here the unloading is actually happening that is sigma dash c. So this is actually indicated by as e is equal to wgs so from void ratio and is uh, now it is actually indicated with water content here and uh, log sigma dash here you can see that ab is the uh, you know recompression line. So the water content uh, changes from a to b you can see that uh, the water content decreases uh, and the R void ratio decreases so A to B and from B that is sigma dash B uh, when it is unloaded BC is the path which actually takes and stresses this point is sigma dash C. So here what is actually happening is that when you have uh, K naught at pressure at rest uh, is uh, defined as sigma uh, horizontal stress by vertical stress uh, when K naught is equal to 1 when, when it is actually having elastic equilibrium. Uh, then sigma dash z is equal to sigma dash h. So this is that K naught line which actually indicates. So this is sigma dash h on the x axis, sigma dash z on the y axis. So you can see that uh, when the case of deposition is actually happening, when the deposition is actually happening, you can see that that A to B it actually decreases and B to C uh, you can see that here the K naught values are actually uh, you know can actually go. Uh, more than one, more than one, particularly because of this, the stress effects. So uh, the one-dimensional consolidation in the swelling of soil ground due to deposition erosion is actually depicted, and these uh, actually uh, you know uh, represent uh, the different water contents uh, because of the the, uh, the type of actions which actually have been subjected. So. For normally consolidated uh, soil and likely over consolidated soil, sigma dash h is actually less than sigma dash z, and k naught sigma dash h is less than sigma naught h is less than uh, sigma dash z, uh, sigma naught h is less than sigma naught z, and k naught less than 1 that is for normally consolidated soil where the deposition is actually happening. So, this is this path which is actually shown a b here, and uh, while as heavy consolidated over consolidated soils, sigma h greater than sigma z and k naught greater than 1. So that is because of this here it actually can have K naught values more than one, more than one can be obtained. For, for some heavily wall consolidated soils and because of the, the stress locking which actually can take place because of that you know they exhibit the K naught values very high. Uh, you know sometimes the K naught value can actually go up to K naught is equal to 3. 
So, uh, so here what uh, we are discussing is that for light and light for normally consolidated and lightly in over consolidated soils sigma dash h the horizontal stress is less than vertical stress and k naught value is less than 1. While for heavily over consolidated soils sigma dash h is greater than sigma h z and uh, k naught is actually greater than 1. So, an approximation is basically often used to estimate k naught and uh, which k naught is actually nothing but k 1 c uh, where uh, k naught of a normally consolidated clay uh, is which is nothing but 1 minus sin phi dash c and phi dash c is the critical state friction angle and root over y naught and uh, the k 1 c minus root over k k 0 n c uh, root over y naught this y naught is nothing but the yield stress which I yield stress ratio which we have defined earlier yield stress ratio is actually nothing but sigma dash y by sigma naught dash where sigma naught dash is the current stress and sigma dash is the stress at the point yield point which is the which is the line of which is the uh, intersection of uh, swelling line through b and with the normal compression line sigma dash p now let us see variation of water content in normally consolidated and war consolidated soils we actually have been pointing out that uh, for normally consolidated soils the water content will be very high and wall consolidated soils the, the normal content is less and uh, uh, so consider the variation of water content uh, with the depth for different uh, with a for a deposit which is lightly eroded uh, which is lightly eroded you can see that uh, eroded uh, that is the depth of erosion which is small or heavily eroded uh, that is depth of erosion is very large. So we have two, so two states uh, this is the stress point A and B and uh, stresses are point C and D. So, this particular soil strata so the point elements A and B actually are referring to uh, the way the depth of erosion is relatively small and in this case the stress element C and D the depth of erosion is relatively large. That means that uh, this the element C and D will be subjected to very high pass pressures A and B subjected to low pressures low degree of pressures. Now what will happen is that for the lightly eroded soil the difference between the water content at point A and B is relatively large while for heavily eroded soil the difference between water content and C and D is much smaller. So here what we have is that water content versus sigma dash z is shown here. So you can see that this is the compression line loading and unloading. So this first limb actually he is refers to sigma dash A and this is unloading. So we have done uh, loading and uh, unloading portion and loading portion which simplified here and this is point B the limb point B and you can see here there is a distinct uh, change in the water content here here there is marked there is no uh, you know negligible uh, or marginal uh, change in the water content with the, for the uh, you know in this particular portion. So for the lightly eroded soil the difference between the water content A and B is relatively large while for heavily eroded soil the difference between the water contents uh, at C and D is smaller. So that is what actually has been indicated here. So here if you look into this this is for the normally consolidated soils or heavily uh, lightly over consolidated soils and these are the heavily over consolidated soils. So you can see that the C and D so this is water content versus the depth and the element A sigma dash A and sigma dash B low water contents at C and D are attributed to the very large past stresses. So the, the soil actually has been subjected to past stresses. So the, the low water contents here recorded and you can see that uh, you know this is also negligible variation but here you can see that the, with the depth of course there is a decrease in water content but thing is that here there is a large variation but here there is a negligible or marginal variation. So the reason is that actually basically attributed to uh, that uh, the, the soil elements at soil C and D were actually has been subjected to very large past stresses. Now let us after having discussed uh, uh, these uh, you know the effects of the load increment ratios and the duration let us look into some example problems and in this example an idometer test was performed in a clay sample of 30 mm uh, thick and drained at both sides that means that we have put kept porous stones at top and bottom and taken from the mid stratum at the mid depth of the clay and 70 percent of consolidation was attained in 6.67 minutes and what we need to find out is that time required to obtain 70 percent consolidation of the uh, consolidation of the clay stratum 
and the magnitude of the settlement in that time. So, magnitude of the settlement in that time. So, an iodometer test was actually performed on a clay sample of 30 mm thick and drained on both sides and taken from uh, mid stratum show, uh, depth shown and 70 percent of consolidation was attained in 6.67 minutes. So, find the time required to attain 70 percent consolidation of the clay stratum and magnitude of the settlement in that time. So, this is uh, you know a, a particular uh, cross section a levee cross section where the sand uh, embankment or a levee embankment is actually placed and this is the clay and we have got uh, uh, you know 2 meter and 7 meter is the thickness of the clay and this is the element A uh, which is E naught is equal to 1, C C is equal to 0.2 and uh, gamma sat is equal to 20 kilometer per meter cube and here is gamma 18 kilometer per meter cube, water table location is somewhere here. Now, the solution works out like this. Since the soil uh, is same is the same clay in the laboratory and in the field and both are actually 70 percent consolidation. So, first what we can do is that uh, you know we can by uh, uh, the quotient of consolidation will be same because what has been done is told is that uh, soil is same uh, same in clay in the clay in the, in the field. Since the soil is same uh, soil is the same clay in the laboratory and in the field and uh, both are actually having 70 percent consolidation. So, time factor T v is equal to T c v by h square. So, we can write it as C v is equal to T suffix v h d r square by small t and uh, which is uh, uh, can be related as uh, because C v in uh, laboratory is equal to C v in prototype C v in uh, field they are same. So, uh, T v h d r square by T laboratory is equal to T capital V suffix V H D R square by T field they are same. So, with that what we get is that T field by T laboratory is equal to H field square by H laboratory. So, T field can be obtained like this T lab T lab into H F square by H L square. So, we actually have measured T lab as 6.67 minutes into H F is actually given as 7 meter thick clay. So, we actually have said that uh, this clay is actually having a thickness of 7 meters. So, 7 divided by uh, the thickness of the sample is 30 mm, but is actually is double drainage. So, what we are doing is that 30 by 2 that is nothing but 1.5 centimeter. Uh, so, we to equalize the units we have taken in centimeter units and uh, with this what we will actually get is that the time which actually takes place in the for 70 percent consolidation is about 2. 0.76 years. That is one thing which we have to note down. The time in the field is uh, you know about 2.76 years. So this, if this type of situations are there in the field, there is a possibility that the settlement actually can affect the uh, structure. And if the settlements are actually occurring, say beyond uh, say 30, 30 years or 40 years or so, and if the design life of the structure is actually small, then uh, we need not really worry about that. But if this is this is the situation there is actually need for understanding and eliminating these settlements. Otherwise, the structure is actually going to be subjected to distress because of the consolidation settlements. So, the amount of the settlement of the, uh, the takes place for 70 percent consolidation <coughs> can be estimated like this, which is we know that degree of consolidation is nothing but 70 percent consolidation at uh, let us say uh, settlement at 70 percent consolidation to final consolidation settlement. So, uh, we know the final consolidation settlement expression. So, we used this. <coughs> so, delta h 70 percent is equal to 0 0.7 cc by h, h full thickness 7 meters we have to take now 1 plus e naught log p naught that is sigma naught dash plus delta sigma dash by sigma naught dash. So, the in situ stress at mid clay stratum before the surcharge applied we can calculate that is the effective stress we can actually calculate and delta p dash or delta sigma dash is nothing but 72 kilo Pascals and this can be calculated as this unit weight of this uh, which can be calculated that is uh, the, the unit weight of the uh, sand surcharge and with that is the increase in the load. So, with that what we will get is that the 70 percent of uh, the settles uh, the amount of settlement that takes place at 70 percent consolidation can be obtained as 70 percent of delta h which is nothing but 0 0.7 times cc, uh, cc is nothing but 0 0.2 which is actually given 
into h which is uh, 7 meters divided by 1 plus e naught and e naught is equal to 1. So, it becomes 1 plus 1 and log to the base 10 sigma naught dash that is the stress at this particular point is uh, you know effective or burden pressure and that is nothing but uh, uh, 71.7 uh, which is actually computed here plus 72 is due to this uh, levy uh, which is actually there. So, because of that what is actually estimates is that so at the center the settlement is actually of the order of 148 mm and which actually is uh, you know above the tolerable limit of say 50 mm. So, in that case you know the structure is actually going to suffer uh, distress. For example, this is a, this is a then, then this cause you know the differential settlements for a levy and uh, which actually can uh, uh, hamper with the integrity of the system. So, the amount of the settlement that takes place at uh, 70 percent consolidation here what we need to understand is that the degree of consolidation is determined by settlement at any time to final consolidation settlement. So, settlement at 70 percent consolidation divided by the final consolidation settlement. So, because of that what we have done is that degree of consolidation is given as 0.7 for that what we have taken is that the settlement at 70 percent consolidation is actually obtained as 0.7 into the expression for the final consolidation settlement we have used here. So, with that what we have got is that at 70 percent degree of consolidation what is the settlement of the uh, the particular levy at the mid stratum depth. So, mid stratum depth the settlement has been computed and this is actually worked out to be around 14.8 centimeters. So, here also we can look into that here that if you are having uh, if you take uh, uh, if you divide the clay into number of uh, small incremental thickness let us say 1 meter 1 meter 1 meter then each depth uh, each thickness we if the settlement is delta 1 delta 2 delta 3 like that delta 7 then you know what we need to do is that we have to calculate what is the increase in load due to the so called the trapezium load which is there uh, that is if you do the method of superposition I can use for this triangular uh, load this trapezium loading and this trapezium loading then we can actually get this settlement at this particular point with that you know we may actually get the more accurate estimation of the, the settlement. Let us take another example where an oidometer test is actually performed on 100 meter thick specimen drained and top at bottom and it was observed that 45 percent consolidation the time factor was 0.15 and which was attained at in 78 hours in the laboratory. And we need to determine the time required to attain 70 percent consolidation is TV is 0.45 in a job site where the clay stratum is shown in the figure. So, we have got a sand layer and a sand layer at the top and bottom and the clay layer which is at the center here that is uh, uh, you know 7.5 meters thickness and let us assume that one dimensional consolidation is actually valid here and there is a building load which actually imposes certain amount of uh, delta sigma on the soil. So, this is the water table location here. So, what we need to find out is that uh, we need to find out uh, you know what is the time which actually takes in the field. So, if you calculate if you see that the coefficient of consolidation is actually same for the lab and field samples again by using the same discussion whatever we had uh, which actually says that C V is equal to T V into H D R square by T with that uh, we can actually compute time in field and uh, which actually works out to be the time in field is actually something like 134 years to attain 70 percent consolidation. So, sometimes actually this appears that for a given uh, type of clay. Uh, you know that the settlements actually continues for uh, about 134 years of time. So, if you are actually constructing a, a, a very important structure on that and if the clay is actually undergoing uh, the consolidation uh, like this and this is actually is a proof uh, that uh, for the you know the leading tower of Pisa even after 400 to 500 years actually is undergoing consolidation this is a classical example. So, uh, if you are actually having this type of uh, situations where the settlements are actually coming uh, predominant settlements are coming within the design life of a building then it is actually better to accelerate the consolidation settlements. So, in such situations if, if the significant amount of consolidation settlements can occur in the design life of a structure there is a need for the acceleration accelerating the consolidation of a soil. So, for that uh, they, there are uh, you know couple of methods which actually we will discuss in the next lecture. So, with that what will happen is that we will be covering in this particular module the methods for accelerating uh, the consolidation settlements.